quick. The whole point of my talk show is to show you that even with having a word of disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be to prove them to stem out to something. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Andrew. That is right. You're watching Keith Andrew Network. That's available on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and all social medias. Today is episode 966. We're on the road to Thanksgiving and also on the road to 1000. So make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment on all the social medias because me and my guests would love to interact with you. That being said, our guest today is an upcoming professional actress and she also does have a disability and she is a great inspiration for people out there like myself who have disabilities we're going to hear from her when we come back but like i said if you're watching on youtube if you're watching you have to leave a comment it makes sense why do you want to talk to the other but when we come back we're going to have a great episode Hi, I'm Teresa Suarez Grosso, and I just had the honor of being interviewed by Keith Andrew on the Keith Andrew Network. Um, he is bringing professionals from the entertainment industry and advocating for people with disabilities. And I'm so thankful to have spent the time with you. Thank you. We're back for the Kamosa break. And like I said, if you're watching, definitely leave a comment to know what you like about the Keith Andrew Network, what you like about the episode, Available on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Like, subscribe, comment, and support people with disabilities. With that being said, first question I want to ask you is to our audience a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, my name is Teresa Suarez Grosso, and I am living in Southern California. I'm a first generation Spanish American. And I was practicing medicine until I had an injury, and that has changed the direction of my life and career. Oh, absolutely. It's always great to be a first of something. <laughs> and you know, for an example of me and my family, I'm the first person with a disability, not to brag about it, the first person with a disability to, to create an attempt to have their own talk show. So it's great to, to be the first of everything. But it's great to be established and amount to something. Then you can brag about it. Attempting to do it, it's like, yeah, he attempted, but you can say he can he, he attempted, he's attempted a lot of things, but once you make it, then it gives you something to brag about. Either way, I like bragging about it. Well, I think you've earned your bragging rights. Yeah. You've done an incredible thing so far, so good for you. Oh, absolutely. And now, now, let me ask you the big elephant in the room because of the theme of the show. It's in the introductions, but I don't like to repeat myself, but I will give you the quick highlights of. The theme of the show is labels do not dictate who you are and who you want to be. It's a proof of having a stem out to something. Long story short, I used to do my introduction when I'm doing this right now. I'm like, it's not about me, it's about the guests. That's why it's in the introduction, so I don't take, take any time away from you. Like right now, I just took two minutes from you. I didn't want to do that, but this is about the guests. The reason I bring it up is you mentioned you have a disability. So the first question I want to ask you is, who inspired you to start your acting career? And have you ever thought or used your disability as a crutch? Well, I am somebody who became disabled later in life. And my disability is um, relatively minor compared to what a lot of other people go through. But because it was new to me, it had a huge impact on me. And I am still maneuvering, learning to identify myself. Um, I kind of feel like an imposter if I say that I have a disability because for a lot of people it's not obvious, although it has created limitations. And I came to acting because um, when I was injured, I wasn't able to continue doing my work and it was a lot of emotional grief. And I was also, um, a dancer. I was very into tango dancing. And because of my injury, I couldn't hold my arm up anymore to dance. 
And I felt like I was really losing this creative outlet that was also part of my social life. And in order to um, release those emotions and be able to continue to be creative, I started taking acting classes more of an outlet than thinking that this would um, lead to another career. But it just so happened that I enjoyed doing it and it was um, a, something that I fell into very easily, I think because um, actors have to be very empathetic just like clinicians do. And you have to be able to listen well and um, just like clinicians do. And so I think it was a pretty good fit. And I, started doing it but it took a really long time before I let anybody know that I was acting because part of me was kind of embarrassed that I was no longer a clinician or able to continue my professional career and everything that I had studied to accomplish um, and suddenly be middle-aged and say oh I'm going to be an actor now and then also um, there's a a little bit of a hesitancy for me to, when I audition, to do I go in with my brace on? Do I not let them know that I have a disability unless it's going to be impactful? Like um, my disability doesn't keep me from doing a lot of things. So if the script doesn't say, you know, you have to hang from monkey bars, then people might not even know that I cannot hang from monkey bars, <laughs> right? Um, and I just recently, I was in my first movie where they actually had me wear my brace. Um, it was for the um, Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. And I had only once before acted with a brace on and it was for a role in a play where I was playing a disabled veteran. Um, so most of the time when I'm on film or on screen, people have no idea that I have this disability, um, which still, it feels strange for me to say that I have a disability. You know, for me, I used to use it as a crutch, you know, saying, I don't have to do this, I don't have to do that. People will feel sorry for me. Things will be handed to me. But it, I call it the boomerang. You throw it. You, you don't have to do this, do that. But then as the boomerang comes back, it whacks you upside the head. <laughs> you get a wake-up call and say, you just labeled yourself as an influence. And not an influencer, an influence. Or info, whatever the hell you want to pronounce the influencer, word. Influencer, right? Well, not an influencer, but a, like influent, uh, and saying you can't do anything because you just said you don't have to do this because people uh, feel sorry for you. But that's why I came up with the show. I uh, besides saying, yeah, I have a disability, it gets me out of a lot of great things, but you also handcuff yourself, saying, yeah, you just told people you're disabled. But how do you, i give you an example on what also I accomplished and admit, but um, a lot of people with a disability, for what I do in the entertainment world, I like to think I'm in the entertainment world, uh, do, do, trying to find a word for it, do, they don't think of a podcast or of a talk show host with having disabilities. You look at Johnny Carson, you look at Bill O'Reilly, you look at Bill Maher, they may or may not have disabilities. If they vote for Trump, they probably do have disabilities, <laughs> but that's, that's a, a different subject. Uh, but you know, when you talk about people in the entertainment world, you don't see them having disabilities because some disabilities are mental and some are physical. You know, for you, you get, well, we can talk about that in a minute, but I guess they, they can actually see it. If they can actually see it, then they're like, okay, now we know what you're working with. Right. If you're, oh, go ahead. I'll give you um, time to answer. Oh, well, um, as I mentioned, my disability is not something that people can see right off the bat unless I'm wearing my brace. And even when I am wearing my brace, a lot of the time people will look at me like, oh, what do you do? Do you hurt yourself? And I'm like, yeah, I've been wearing this for like 15 years on and off. You just never look down to, to see it, which is great because, you know, I can, I'm in a situation where I can kind of hide my disability, which not everybody can do. And it can be a double-edged sword um, because, you know, I might have my arms full and, and you would think if somebody sees you with your arms full and your arm is in a brace that they would hold the door open, but, you know, it's, it's not always going to happen. So I haven't really been in a situation where, um, 
my disability has um, created a scenario where I use it as a crutch. I'm still processing the fact that there are things that I can't do and learning to accept that there are things I can't do and kind of trying to maneuver around it and think of, well, what can I do? And it's so true what you're saying about um, the entertainment industry doesn't really show a lot of people with disabilities or um, have positions available that are obvious uh, for people with disabilities. Um, and I think that that's a limitation that people like you are, are blowing the stereotype off because you are doing something that you feel like you can do and you're succeeding at it and saying, hey, there is a place for me at the table. Um, I was just, um, just read a book um, about an, an actor who is deaf and he went on to be on a, couple of reality shows and and he listening to his autobiography because I, I listen to books now that I can't hold the book anymore um, it, it opened up a lot of um, empathy in me because I like to think that I'm an empathetic person and I can see other people's perspectives but listening to him talk about his experience and his community's experience um, having been born with that situation and having to to cope with the people around him and their ignorance, um, it's really eye-opening for me. And I'm like I said, I'm new to having a limitation, so I'm still I'm still learning, you know. No, you're absolutely right. Unless you're able to see it, when people just think you're you know full of BS or something. Uh, but you know, going back to what I was saying before, using it as you know an excuse, you know, I didn't have to take SATs. Or I, I think I did, but it didn't matter if I passed or not, as long as you took them. But you know, there's certain things like that. You're like, oh, I, I, I don't have to do jerry duty. Oh, I don't have to do this. But at the same time, you want to, you do want to be treated like everyone else. But it's kind of like people. I would say people in like in the war, you know, shell shock, post dramatic, stra PSD. But there, that, yes, that is some form of disability, but you aren't born with it. So unless you're you know, hunched over or in a wheelchair or making faces, people assume it, it's a mask. It's an act. I would be a biggest hypocrite if I was normal and I was doing whatever. And I said, hey, you know, watch my show. I have a disability, but you're really, you don't have anything. But that's what make my sh makes my show better, saying, yes, I do have a disability. I read and learn at a fifth grade level, but look at what I accomplish. You mentioned, you know, in your case, you know, you are a disabled actor, actress, I apologize, disabled actress, and you are in the voiceover world. So it looks good that people are giving us an opportunity, saying regardless if you're disabled or not, you will come and sit at the table and be given an opportunity. Now, when you're given that opportunity, one or thing, one or two things will happen. You would, I, it's like a candle. The candle will start off flaming and no inner jokes about that anyway, <laughs> but the candle will start off flaming. And if it burns and it keeps burning, you're doing something right. And you just take it one step at a time. Once the candle goes out or gets dim, then you're right. Like, okay, this is not working. Maybe we should try something else. It's just the honor and the time where people just say, you, you know, I'm, I'm really bad at metaphors. It, it's, it's okay. People say about the rocket, you know, you can be an overnight sensation. You can be the next Mari Cyrus. You can be the next uh, Bill Maher, and be TVs and the flavor of the month, but as fast as you go up, as as fast as you go down. So you better work your ass off, <laughs> number one, and have a game plan. Say, okay, I, I guess you would probably think it's the same way. I'm a disabled actor, and I do voiceovers. What else can I do to keep that momentum going? Because you don't want to say I'm a one-trick pony and then realize that you're also a one-hit wonder. 
because there's so <laughs> many one hit wonders out there. Yeah, I think uh, something that you said kind of triggered a memory for me because I am um, I'm in acting not by my original choice. It wasn't something that had ever occurred to me as a kid. I thought, you know, actors only live in Hollywood or they're born into fame or, or relationships and contacts like that. I was raised in Iowa and I didn't know any actors, um, but I fell into acting because my career as a clinician wouldn't allow me to continue to work with my disability. They w put limitations on what I could do, even though clinically my, my mind is sound and um I still can practice medicine. It's simply they weren't willing to accommodate my disability and the 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 fact that I couldn't use the electronic medical system as as rapidly and um, go through as many patients at a time because of limitations really that were um, technical, not a limitation of my own. Because I was doing telephone care, you know, I can talk on the phone just fine. Um, my arm isn't necessary to talk on the phone. It was the rest of the process in the clinic and the bureaucracy that was putting up limitations and saying, oh no, we can't give you voice dictation. Only the doctors get voice dictation. Um, oh no, we only have two keyboards available. Sorry, they're both too big for you. Or sorry, you're too petite. We don't have a desk that goes that low. So yeah, you're you're ergonomically, we, we're just not gonna accommodate you. And it was really that rejection in the mainstream um, of my, my original, original pr chosen profession of medicine the resistance in that industry is what led me to this industry and um i'm hoping that <laughs> i won't meet the same resistance here that i did there um and so far so good you know i'm still at the at the start of it um but i'm i'm trying to keep my eyes and ears and heart open and definitely now that i am um, in the margins of this community of other people who have disabilities, it's opened my eyes to what is missing. And I feel like I need to stand up and advocate for other people um, because so many people have disabilities that are so much more extreme than mine, you know, and um, I don't, I don't think anybody should be limited in what they can do based on somebody else's perception or um, laziness about being willing to adapt a situation so that somebody can work to the most of their ability. You know, if it just takes uh, somebody to be an ALS um, uh, interpreter, then get that person on the set so this person can do what they want to do. If you need a special keyboard or voice dictation, it's, it's not asking that much, you know. So I really feel like everybody needs to advocate for it and not just people who have the disability themselves and it really opened my eyes up because I I like I said I thought that I was a very empathetic person but I wasn't really going out of my way to always make sure that other people who had limitations have resources available to them and I think that that's a huge responsibility that that has come to come to my um the forefront of my experience now and I, I want to help advocate for other people who have challenges that are much, much greater than mine. Well, let me ask you guys two questions. You know, people say, you know, they have disabilities and everything. Do you think they are more like the normal person compared to, you know, any, you know, Johnny Go Likely you see on the street? And I'll like, give you an example. Okay. You know, people are like, oh, you know, Akifi, you know, you can't read, you can't write, you weren't on a slower pace. But well, you have some jack off, you know, going in the opposite rain, driving a car, or you can go, you, you know, you can cause a, um, you can, this is what I, I mean. People like to say, oh, can you, or anyone, for that matter, with a disability, they're slow, they do this, they do that. All I want to say, like George Collins said, walk around with a well pad and paper. You gotta get a, a total of fifty names at the end of the day. Idiots going for the red light, you're know, honking their horns, you're cutting you off, so cutting you know, going on the shoulder versus no passing, no turns on the wet. And I'm thinking to myself, and I'm the one they say it's retarded and has disabilities. What about this guy who just cut off an eighteen wheeler? Oh well, where's there's a cop when you need them. But it, 
you, there's so many stupid things that you do, but it's okay, you know, to point fingers at him and her and say, well, they have a disability. What about this one? This one that's blue, um, going 70 miles per hour past the police barracks. <laughs> it, it's so hypocritical. And I work with people. Um, one person who was in a wheelchair. And, and okay, in this job description, they said when you're a greeter, you may have to climb a ladder, but we know, we're going to make an inception for you because we know you're in a wheelchair. Obviously, they fired that guy because he couldn't climb a ladder. You hired him knowing he was in a wheelchair. Was yeah. he pretending to be in a wheelchair? No, he actually had something wrong with him. That's why he was in a wheelchair. But that's okay. You walk over to him with a big handful of flyers. Oh, hey, John, I need you to climb this ladder. It's, it's just like a circus act or something. But there's so many things. You People like the label things. Oh, he has a disability. He can do this. He's an alcoholic. Not saying that's a disability. But you say... Everything has to be night and teedy. Uh, it has to dot the I's, cross the T's. But we are given more of a hard time because we have disabilities. And I bet you fall in that situation. But so you know, all you have to do is sit back and observe. People can't drive their life dependent on it. How they treat each other. How they treat each other because they think they're so high and mighty and they're so better than anyone else. You're not better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. And some people think they have a Napoleon complex. My sister thinks I have a Napoleon <laughs> complex. But it's easier it's easy to sit there and point fingers when the truth is right in front of your face and saying uh, you, what you're saying is disabled people are normal people and people who don't have disabilities are the crazy ones. Eh, maybe that's true. Maybe that's not. What's your opinion? Well, I think that um, part of what you're getting at is the fact that there, there are stereotypes that people believe or that they project, even if they know deep in their hearts that they're not true, whether it's about a disability or somebody's race or uh appearance or whatever it might be that make people jump to conclusions and create judgments about what they can and can't do or who they are inside and we all have to to fight against that and and make sure of our own prejudices as well and be, and be aware of things that we're doing that um might be creating or generating or promoting those kind of stereotypes and just nip it in the bud and say, Hey, no, uh, that's, that's not the case. And if you hear an off color joke, or if you hear an off color comment, or if you um, see somebody getting picked on or, or being um, discriminated against in any way, step in and be that advocate, be that voice that says, Hey, no, 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 you're, you're wrong. And this is how we're going to prove it. And, you know, it just, it takes everybody putting forth that effort to make sure that we can break those stereotypes and um, blockades and, and rip them down and make sure that everybody can, can work to their maximum of their potential, whatever that may be, and um, give everybody a place at the table, you know, whenever yeah. possible. No, you're absolutely right. And, and going back to Will Fass, about the jokes jokes are meant to be funny it can be about anything but as on the way great george collins said content it depends on how you use it and content you know yes you can take it offensively but if you mean it just like a joke as in funny you're going to, you know it's okay to laugh at stupid things but you at the same time you can't walk around and I'm guilty of this, walk around with emotions on your sleeves and take everything so personally. The point of life to, is to laugh and to enjoy it and be the best version of yourself. But with that being said, it was the last seven minutes. I'm going to pass it over to you. 
Was there anything you wanted to promote? Anything you want to talk about? I have no cards up my sleeve. But <laughs> this is your time. You can talk about whatever you want. Um, I just want to jump board off of what you're saying, you know, and, and what you said about jokes and stuff too. There's context. And there's situations there's, you know, if you're at a comedy show and people are using extremes as part of their comedy, that's one thing. But if you're in a, a business situation and somebody is making you uncomfortable or, or behaving inappropriately and trying to play it off as, oh, I'm just kidding, but they're really creating an insult or a, a divisive situation, then it's up to us to perceive that difference and and stand up when it's appropriate and then realize when, oh, this is just all in good fun versus no, this is absolutely not acceptable. And we, we can't allow it to continue. Um, I think that what you're doing with your show is fantastic. Not only because you're doing something for your, for your own self confidence to say, Hey, I, I listened to some of your interviews before how people told you that you couldn't do something. And you, you said, no, no, I'm going to prove you wrong. And I can, but not only that, you've proved them wrong, but you're also giving other people the opportunity to to tell their stories and to create an awareness. Because without awareness um, and without education, nobody grows and nobody learns and, and things don't change. And so if what we want in the world is to create better change, then we have to be part of the the impetus to, to make that change happen. So um, kudos to you for for what you're doing. And, and I've been inspired by a lot of people that I've met through my um, entry into acting um, who, who are doing wonderful things. There's um, some talent agencies that work with people who have disabilities. There are people who are advocating for people with disabilities. And fortunately or unfortunately, a lot of the time it's, it's when you end up with a disability that you become an advocate. But kudos to those who got that disability or have that disability and decided that they're going to use it for positive instead of wallowing in you know, whatever could be negative. Um, so I've, I've, I've started to become inspired by a lot of people who have gone through so much more, because like I said, my disability is relatively minor on the, on the broader spectrum of things. To me, it was major because it changed my life and it changed the course of the direction of my career, of my social life, of my hobbies, of my friends. Um, but it also opened up a whole new world. And so I'm trying to um, embrace that new world and continue to learn lessons and hopefully make good of what could have been, you know, lemons make lemonade. <laughs> no, that's true. Now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But wrapping up, I want you to be brutally honest. When I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what made you say yes how do you feel now and what do you recommend it to other people out there? Um, I was very curious and I still am to know where you found my name because I'm definitely uh, new at this and I don't have a, a Twitter following or a social media following or anything. And so um, I was really um, taken aback that you approached me as an actor. And I sincerely thought it was because you had seen me promoting something that had to do with disabled actors or something. And then later you told me that you didn't even know that I was disabled, that you had reached out to me purely as an actor. And that made me even more curious that I was um, instantly impressed with what you were doing. And I looked you up and I listened to some of the episodes and I thought, wow, I don't really know what I have to offer because this experience is new to me, both as an actor and as a person with an injury. But if I can do anything positive um, for you or for the community and, you know, and even for my own self-promotion, I don't know that it will do anything for myself. But boy, if I have the chance to help other people or help you or help other disabled people or bring some sort of attention to the to entertainment industry as a whole, then I'm in. <laughs> No, absolutely. And that's what the Key Fans Network is about, is entertainment. I'm sorry, try to... I can cut that part out. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I, when I talk too much, I uh, I get tired. No I, Anyway, but that's what I'm saying, that the Key Fans Network is about entertainment. It's about saying, hey, I interview professional wrestlers. I interview people with and without disabilities. I'm showing you I can do the same exact thing, but it will be scaled back. And of course, there's other things on the show, 
that, you know, it's for the younger audience too, if they like Dumbo, Jumbo Bug, or the Human Pyramid stuff. But the point is, and the key word is entertainment. Uh, with that being said, uh, wrapping up your interview segment, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest. I'm looking forward to part two. And our forever fans out there, thank you for watching. Leave your feedback. And until we meet again, catch you later. Thank you, and have a good night. <laughs>